It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Beth Hiley. Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Cat and Mouse Game Store in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm very excited to introduce you to our, one of our new games, Takanoko. Now, I've been waiting a couple months for this game to come out, so I'm really happy it's here at the store. It's a lighter game, takes about 45 minutes, plays two to four players, but its most enchanting feature is its theme. Long ago, the Emperor of China gifted a great panda to the Emperor of Japan, and the players are in charge of caring for that panda by cultivating fields of bamboo. So join with me on a quick walkthrough of Takanoko and see why maybe you might be equally enchanted as me. In Takanoko, you are court members in, in ancient Japan, and you are trying to take care of this giant panda, which is a gift from the Emperor of China. So you're going to be growing different kinds of bamboo in this bamboo field that we're about to build, and then the panda's going to be eating various types of bamboo. You'll also have the help of the Imperial Gardener, who's going to help the bamboo to grow more quickly. Now, all of your points are going to come from these three card decks, so whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to win. Now on your turn, you're going to do two actions, and your player aid here actually has a listing of the actions that you can take, and you can take any combination of these, but you can't take the same one twice. So we're going to start by going through what these actions are. The first action that you can take is drawing more plots. So plots are these hexagon shapes that have bamboo types of different colors. Now on, if you choose this action, you're going to draw three and then you may choose one that you wish to keep, and the rest will just go on the bottom of the deck. Some have special symbols, we'll talk about those in a little bit, and some do not. But if I'm going to place, perhaps I really want this pink one, I have to either place it next to the starting pond hex here, or it has to be next, next to two other hexes that already existed. So if this were the case, I could put my pink one down here because it is next to two other hexes. So either next to the pond or next to two previous land tiles. The second action that you can take is irrigation. Now irrigation channels are these uh, blue wooden pieces here. And the action merely is taking one of these. You may also play it if you wish. That does not take an action at all. You can place these into the land at any point on your turn. But if you want to, you could store them for later on your player board. That way over multiple turns you could collect multiple irrigation channels and then lay them all at once. Now, some hexes are automatically irrigated. If they are placed anywhere adjacent to this pond tile, then they automatically have access to water. But any tile, like this pink one here, that is not adjacent to the pond tile is going to need water brought over to it. So we would have to place these irrigation channels along the seams between the two hexes until one side of the hex has a wooden irrigation channel alongside. So just bringing it to the corner is not enough. We actually have to lay one along the side and now this pink tile is irrigated. Now any time a tile is irrigated, and that could be when it is played, particularly if it's adjacent to the pond tile, or when you bring an irrigation channel out to it, it's going to immediately grow a bamboo shoot. The third action that you can take is to move the gardener, and he moves in a straight line for as far as you want. So I could move him in a straight line here just to this green hex, or I could potentially move him in a straight line all the way down here to this yellow hex. So wherever you want him to go, as long as he's in a straight line, you can move him as far as he wants. So I'm going to move him to this green one in the middle. He then immediately grows a bamboo shoot on every irrigated tile that he is adjacent to that is of the same color. So he's standing on a green hex, so he is going to grow some green bamboo for every uh, green hex that is adjacent to him and irrigated. So he would grow a bamboo shoot here on the tile that he's standing on and the one adjacent to him. The fourth action that you can take is moving the panda and he moves exactly the same way as the gardener. He's going to move in a straight line for as many hexes as you would like him to move. So in this case, perhaps I'd like to move the panda up here to this top green hex. 
Now, whichever hex he lands on, he's going to eat one shoot of bamboo. So one little segment here. I have a, a sample here. I've laid out a couple sample pieces. You always grow them in one line all stacked up on top of each other. So he's going to eat that top piece, and he goes in this little panda outline here that's on your player board. And this is going to be a collection spot for all the pieces that he has ingested. The final action that you can take is drawing a new objective card. Now we haven't talked about these yet, but these are the, the way that you earn points to win the game. So if you decide you need a new card, then you would use one of your two actions to draw a new card from one of these three piles. Now you have a hand limit of five cards, so if this is your fifth card, you're not allowed to draw any more until you complete some of the objectives and free up a little room in your hand. So those are the five actions that you can take on your turn, and you're going to be picking some combination of two different ones. Now you may find as you are expanding your field that some of these hexes are going to have special symbols on them, always a choice of three, and there's extra of these symbols in the game. Each one of them has a particular bonus power, and if it's printed here on the hex, then this hex automatically comes built in with that bonus power. So the first one is the Panda Protection. If a hex has this red bordered uh, symbol on it, then it means the panda cannot eat any of the bamboo on that hex. He can travel there and he can end his movement there, but he won't eat anything. The second one is automatic irrigation. It has a blue border. And no matter where this hex is placed in your field, it automatically irrigates. So consequently, as soon as it, as it is added to, your, to the board, it's going to require its free bamboo shoot that you get whenever a field is irrigated. And finally, the last one is Fertilizer, which has a brownish gray border. And this hex is going to immediately grow two shoots whenever previously you were supposed to just grow one, whether that be through irrigation or by using the garter. So you're always going to grow two shoots instead of one. Now anytime you're growing bamboo, there's always two limits. You're only ever going to have one stalk, and that stalk can never be more than four pieces high. So if this were the case, and this hex was supposed to grow another one, perhaps by a gardener moving in to an adjacent spot, this hex would not grow anymore because it has now reached its maximum height. Well, now that we've reviewed all the actions on the turn and all the special symbols, we're actually going to talk about what happens at the beginning of your turn. You're going to start your turn by rolling this weather die, which just has various weather symbols printed on the, around the edges. If you happen to get the question mark side, you're going to pick a weather side of your choice. Now, so you're going to start your turn by rolling the die, applying the effect, and then proceeding with the other two actions that, of your choice. Now, the effects of the different weather sides are also printed right here on your player board for reference, and they are... If you happen to roll the sun, you're going to get an extra action. So you would do three actions instead of your customary two. If you roll the rain cloud, you're going to immediately pick one irrigated plot to grow some bamboo. So maybe we'll choose the pink one here since that is irrigated. And again, you can never exceed that four bamboo limit. And it also has to be irrigated. If you have the weather symbol, for instead of picking two different actions for your turn, you may do the same one twice. So I could move the gardener twice and he'll consequently grow bamboo twice. I could have the panda move and he eats two pieces and so on. If you draw, if you roll the lightning bolt, the panda gets scared and immediately moves to a hex of your choosing and once there, it's going to eat the customary piece. So he runs because he's scared of the lightning and then he eats something to make himself feel better. And finally, if you roll the purple clouds, you're going to grab one of these bonus chips, which we just reviewed, so you already know what they do. And grabbing one of these bonus chips is much the same way as grabbing one of the irrigation markers. You bring it over here to your player board, and then you may add it to a hex at some point on your turn at your choosing. So you could add one of these special powers in addition to the two actions that you would normally take. Keep in mind, though, that you can't add a uh, special power to a hex that already has a special power built in or to a hex that already has a chip added by another player. So only one power per hex. Finally, we're going to look at some examples of the objective cards. We know that these cards are what's going to give us the points that we need to win. You're going to start the game with one of each color, and as we know, you can draw more using the objective card actions, as one of your two actions allowed on your turn. 
Now each one of these has a particular different task that you have to accomplish. And as soon as that task is accomplished, on your turn, you can put the card face up on the table and you now have that card and its points permanently until the end of the game. And the person with the most points is going to be the winner. Now each one of these has a different flavor. To earn points here from the blue deck, you're going to have to have a certain combinations of hexes on the board. So if at any time, whether it be on your turn or somebody else's, you get a pattern of four yellow hexes like this, on your turn you can reveal this card for four points. The red deck is all about growing shoots of bamboo. So in this example, you have to grow a shoot of green bamboo that is four sections tall. And there's a very tiny symbol here that says you may not use any of the special bonuses, such as the no panda eating, the auto irrigation, or the fertilizer. So you have to grow it the old fashioned way. And finally, the purple deck is the panda eating deck. And this is getting combinations of uh, chomped pieces by using either the panda action or by rolling the lightning bolt and having the panda sort of getting a free munch. So if you have two yellow pieces sitting on your player board in that little panda spot, then you could immediately put this card down. And you're going to remove those two pieces. You're essentially going to turn them in to award yourself this card. So you're not going to stick around with those uh, panda eating pieces forever. They will go back to the supply. The game ends when a player achieves a certain amount of objective cards, and that amount is going to differ depending on how many players you have. So for example, in a two-player game, whenever a person acquires their ninth objective, so when they've placed it face up on the table, they've, they've accomplished their ninth objective, that person is going to be awarded the Emperor card here, which is pretty much the signal of the end of the game as well as being worth two points. Now everyone else at the table is going to get one more turn, so one more chance hopefully to collect some more points and hopefully get more than anyone else. And then once you everyone has that final last turn, you're going to tally up the points and find the winner. Well that's a walkthrough of Takanoko. Now like I said, this is a lighter game, but it's just so enchanting and let's face it, gosh darn cute. So if you find that you like a game that just has a theme that's so enthralling, so engaging that you can lose yourself in the story, then I would also recommend checking out The Adventurers. Now this is also a lighter game. We'll finish in about 45 minutes. And in this, you're going to play an adventurer who is traveling through an Indiana Jones type ruins trying to get treasure. Meanwhile, you're going to be dodging rolling boulders and walls that come crashing in and tiles that come falling out and bridges that drop from beneath your feet. So again, it has a feel to it that you can just completely get lost in the story. Finally, if you like that idea that you're accomplishing some different objectives throughout the game, then you might want to check out Kingdom Builder. Now obviously your objectives are secret in Takanoko. In Kingdom Builder, they're public. Everyone knows the three objectives that you're going to work for for the whole game that will score you points. But they, you can shuffle out different objectives when you play across different games. So sometimes you're going to be focusing on different elements. And I found I had a similar feel to it in Takanoko. It's just those were secret and specific to me, whereas these are general and apply to the whole table. Now, all these we have here at the store. And trust me, once you look into the Takanoko box, you're going to fall in love. So come on down to the store, let us just lay it out on the table for you, and trust me, I think you'll come to love it as much as us. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.